I briefly mentioned the Amityville Horror in one of my top 5 ghost videos, and whilst researching the story, I discovered the real horror of what happened in that house, and the claimed consequences of the horrific murders that were committed there. So here is the true tragic story behind the Amityville Horror, and why it's one of the world's most infamous believed haunted houses. It all started when 112 Ocean Avenue was sold by the Riley family to Ronald Sr. and Louise DeFeo on June the 28th, 1964. Ten years later, the family consisted of the couple, their sons Mark, John, Ronald Jr. and daughters Dawn and Allison. On the surface, the family seemed perfect, successful and happy, but behind closed doors, Ronald Jr., known as Butch, was growing increasingly violent towards the family. He often fought with his mother, and in an attempt to solve his problems, they placed their son into psychiatric care. This unfortunately proved to be futile, as Butch refused to cooperate with counsellors. To try and keep their son stable, Ronald and Louise started giving Butch whatever he wanted, buying him stuff and throwing money at him. But this too just fueled things further, as he was spending the money on drink, LSD and heroin. His erratic behaviour escalated, and on the evening of November the 13th, 1974, Butch raced into his local bar, Henry's, and shouted, Please help me, I think my mother and father are shot. Taking Butch's car, his friends raced to 112 Ocean Avenue. They entered the dark, unlocked house, and the family dog started barking wildly. As the group of men made their way upstairs, they were met with a horrific scene. The lifeless bodies of Ronald and Louise DeFeo were sprawled on their bed. Soon after, the men also discovered the bodies of the DeFeo children, Dawn, Allison, Mark, and John. All six of the family members had been shot whilst they slept. Butch soon became a suspect, and after questioning, he thought Mafia hitman Louis Fellini was responsible for his family's death, and kept up this claim through many hours of questioning. Detectives kept Butch in the cells and returned to the house where they discovered boxes of 35 caliber ammunition in his room. It was an exact match to the bullets used to kill the family. Butch was arrested and charged with the killings, but continued to protest his innocence. After further questioning, he finally said, It all started so fast. Once I started, I just couldn't stop. It went so fast. Butch was given six consecutive life sentences for killing his family, and is currently held at Greenhaven Correctional Facility in New York. Over the years, Butch has changed his story of the killings many times. One time he said a demon had possessed his soul and told him to kill his family, and his latest claim is that his sister Dawn carried out the murders, so he killed her. So that is the story behind the murders, but this is only the beginning for the three-story Dutch colonial house in Amityville. After the murders, the house was put up for sale, and during the summer of 1975, the Lutz family, George, Kathy, and her three children from a previous marriage, viewed the house and fell in love with it. They were made aware of what had happened, but decided they could live with its tragic past, and were thrilled that they had such a beautiful house for only $80,000. Before moving in, they had the house blessed, and apparently, when blessing one room upstairs, the priest heard a male voice shout, Get out! He did not tell the family of this voice, but warned them that he felt a bad presence in that room, and advised them not to use it as a bedroom. Almost as soon as the family moved in, strange things started to happen. There were cold spots all over the house, strange smells ranging from perfume to excrement, jolting sounds at night that would wake the family, and the house would fill with swarms of flies, yet no other house on the street would experience them. And strangely, the flies apparently originated in the room where the priest felt an evil presence. After just a few days of being in the house, instead of settling in and enjoying their new home, George was becoming increasingly volatile and was becoming detached from the rest of the family. He became obsessed with the fireplace, often complaining that despite a roaring fire, the house was too cold. He would wake up at 3.15 every night without fail, which is thought to be around the time the DeFeo murders took place. Kathy also started to display unusual behaviour, and was convinced someone was touching her. The Lutz children began arguing between themselves, something they never did before, and this resulted in their parents beating them mercilessly. The family also claimed the walls would ooze with green slime, and objects would fly across rooms. Their youngest child, Missy, apparently spoke to an imaginary angel called Jody that could change shape and form, often presenting itself as a large pig. Kathy and George apparently once witnessed Jody when they said they saw two red eyes peering through their bedroom window, and Missy later confirmed that it was Jody trying to get in. 
After a couple of weeks, the Lutz family stopped going out, preferring to invite friends around instead, and it's said that their friends also heard strange noises and unexplained footsteps around the home. For the Lutzes, it was a great relief to them that it was not their imagination and something was actually happening, but this by no means put a dampening on the activity. One night, George was woken up by the sound of a marching band in his living room. When he went down there to see what was going on, all of the furniture had been pushed to one side and the room was filled with an eerie silence. The final straw for the family happened the night before they decided to leave the house. George was lying awake in bed and the rest of the family were asleep when Kathy suddenly lifted up off the bed. George then got the feeling someone had got into bed beside him and he was completely paralyzed but could hear the children's beds slamming up and down in the next room. Their pet dog who was staying in the room with them apparently started going round and round in circles and began to throw up. By the morning, George had had enough and the family fled the house that afternoon on January the 14th, 1976, leaving most of their belongings behind. After they left, the famous paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren and the Duke University Professor and the President of the American Society for Psychic Research visited the home. During their research, they told of a feeling of terror whilst there and concluded the home was haunted. The Lutz's account of what happened in the house has since spawned an entire industry of books, documentaries and a blockbuster Hollywood movie with several sequels. It made the Lutz's very wealthy people, which is why skeptics argue that the whole thing was made up and was just a plot to get the Lutzes out of financial trouble. Recently, Daniel Lutz, who was one of the children in the home, came forward and spoke of the terrifying experiences the family had in the house. So, needless to say that everything surrounding the Amateurville house, especially the believed paranormal activity, has caused it to become one of the most known haunted houses out there. And real or not, it seems our fascination with the house and the events that took place there will forever leave us wondering what really went on during the Lutz's residence. So that is the story of the Amateurville House. I hope you've enjoyed and see you in the next video.